I give honor to all of these great preachers, Amen. grace this podium, and I must give honor here to Mount Zion Baptist Church Amen. that represents the foundation and orthodoxy of African-American Christendom here in Madison, Wisconsin. Amen. And I give that respect honorably because all of those of us who have followed would not have been able to follow had there not been the forerunners in this city and the forerunners being that of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Well. And I appreciate Mount Zion because it is not so staunch in its orthodoxy that it cannot be progressive in the move of the Spirit of God and the direction that God would lead it to go. I said many words just to say you can come to Mount Zion and just have church. And Lord have mercy this choir. Amen. I thank God for this choir and do appreciate this church. I also want to give honor to your pastor, the great man of God, the angel of this house, Reverend Richard Jones, and I appreciate him for giving me and providing me this opportunity. Uh, since he's not here, I get to say what I want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, uh, I just want to just say how much I have uh, simply grown to love Pastor Jones and appreciate him and his ministry and uh, the way that he has so uh, uh, taken the ministry of Mount Zion into the very heart of Madison, Wisconsin. You cannot think Madison without thinking Mount Zion and I believe that is in large part due to the work and the efforts that uh, Pastor Richard Jones has continued forward in the ministry that is here at Mount Zion so I thank God for this opportunity and appreciate all of you I thank God for my wife amen, amen. It's here with us today and uh, just goes with me wherever I go. I thank God for. Amen. I go with her wherever she goes to. Uh, she had a preaching engagement. It was for uh, a women's uh, service. And uh, she told me, she said, well, it's for a women's service. You don't have to go. I said, now, do you really think you're going to be preaching somewhere? And my face is not going to be in the place. Now, you better think again. So uh, she comes with me, and I go with her. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for her and her ministry and that her love that she shows on a daily basis. I want to move swiftly into the word of the Lord. There are quite a few things that I want to share, and I want to do it in an expeditious manner. Uh, I know that uh, we have communion today, but uh, uh, if, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on a mission I'm on a mission, and I've been on this mission. I've kind of been stuck here, uh, and I won't really call it stuck, but for the lack of a better word, I've been kind of stuck here for uh, uh, the past couple of months. I'm on a mission. I want to see God's people free. I, I think we have been bound up for far too long, and uh, uh, I, I really want to see God's people free. And uh, that's part of my purpose here today. Let, let, let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, God, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to open your word and to hear what the Spirit of God would speak to his people. Father, we just pray now that you would begin to open our minds and open our hearts, make us receptive to hear that which you have ordained for this hour in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give us ready hearts and give us ready walking feet that we will be able to walk out this word as you have dictated it through the oracles of your written word as, and as spoken by the vessel that you have chosen for this time. Now, Father, as we open your word, we pray that you would watch over your word now to perform it. 
Grant unto your people a spirit of understanding and to your servant here give clarity of speech and strong anointed deliverance. And for everything that is accomplished, we will give your high name all the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And glory to God. If you'll take your Bibles in hand and turn to the 51st division of Psalm. Psalm 51. And there's really only one verse that I, w that I wish to extract from this particular psalm to... Uh, make as a springboard into today's message. Psalm 51 and verse number 6. Psalm 51 and verse number 6. I will read in your hearing from the New King James Version. You may follow along silently in whatever particular version you have available to you now. Again, Psalm 51 and verse number 6. And the Bible reads, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. I'm going to read that again. It says, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. I want to talk to you for the next few moments from the following subject, and that is the creative crashing of your comfortable lie. The creative crashing of your comfortable lie. There's a lot of talk right now about the kingdom of God. It seems everywhere you turn there is one uh, mention or another as it relates to the kingdom of God or being kingdom focused. Uh, you just about cannot turn on Christian television and listen to the ministers as they talk about the kingdom of God in this hour and how the kingdom of God is the order of the day. We have even gone as far as now that we have become so kingdom minded and so kingdom focused that uh, uh, we have started naming our churches with kingdom in the name and we have our uh, 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 we have our big conferences and conventions and uh, our, our motto has something to do with the kingdom. We hear everywhere we turn kingdom here and kingdom there and uh, 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 and, and, and it's very interesting to me because I have a question relating to that. Now, now I'm not casting expersion against that. Please don't misunderstand. I just have a question. And I'm wondering if this focus, this emphasis on the kingdom of God is it really reality or has it just become a buzzword? You see, we in the body of Christ, you know, we can catch on to a buzzword. And, and you know, once we catch on to something that we can say that will excite the people, you won't pray with me today. Once we find something that we can say in church and say it the right kind of way to get a particular response from people, we will learn how to use that verbiage in order to manipulate the emotions of the people. And I wonder if kingdom has somehow become one of those buzzwords words that we've learned how to manipulate. You know, down through the years, we've had one buzzword or another. I remember when anointing was a buzzword. You know, everybody who was anybody who thought they might have been somebody had an anointing. And, and you know, I really want to be the anointed one. And, 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 and we had so uh, uh, taken that word out of its context that we, that we missed the power that true anointing had in the body of Christ. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, do you wonder, I wonder, I wonder if the kingdom of God has taken that same place. <laughs> I 
You see, the great thing is, and it is a good thing, that we're talking about the kingdom. The great thing is that we are giving focus to the kingdom. But the bad thing is that many of us really don't know what the kingdom of God really is. In the Bible, in St. Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 21, you can just jot it down, I'll read it to you. St. Luke 17, 20 and 21, the Bible reads like this. It says, now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. If we are to find the real truth of the kingdom of God, we're not going to find it at our big conferences. We're not going to find it in our churches with kingdom in the name. I know there are people that are making the statement, we don't do church, we do kingdom. Well, you're not going to find the kingdom there because this kingdom is something that's not something that you can do. For you will not find the kingdom with observation. You won't be able to say, look over there, there's kingdom. Or look over there, there's kingdom. If you want to find the kingdom of God, you are going to have to look within. You're going to have to make the journey within. Because in order to truly understand that which is kingdom, you're going to have to go on the inside. You see, there is a difference in the recognition of being a part of the church and being a part of the kingdom. Well, well. Let me just throw this out here just real quick here. I, I, th this is just something to kind of get me where I need to go so I don't need to stay here very long. Uh, uh, the, the church is wholly external. While the kingdom is wholly internal. You see, really, when, when Jesus uh, uh, said that upon this rock I will build my church, you see, uh, uh, I know we recognize church as a religious term, but if we look at it from its original Greek rendering, it comes from the word ecclesia. And ecclesia was a group of people who were a called out group of individuals, and they were called out to be legislators. So really, when he said, upon this rock I will build my church, it would have been synonymous with him saying, upon this rock, I build my Congress. Hear me, hear me. So we in the body of Christ, when we gather together and we call ourselves church, it's really not a religious expression. We have gathered here today to call in the legislature. And we legislate in the spirit through our prayers and through the word of God and through the exposition of the kingdom of God. Because he said to the church that I will give you, the church, the legislature, the keys of the kingdom of God. And whatsoever you bind uh, on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So we are a legislature. Now I know they think the laws come out of the, 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 uh, uh, from downtown, but really the real true legislature happens right here in the church. Upon this rock, I build my Congress. So you see, the church is wholly an external thing. It is what we do. Now I know for many years we have made the statement that we are the church, and we are. Uh, I am the church. And I am. But I cannot be the church without you. And you cannot be the church without me. Uh, um, 
you know, there are many different representatives and, and legislators, but, but you know, a, a, a representative cannot be the Congress without another representative. One representative cannot just walk up and say, look, I'm Congress. No, you are a part of Congress. So I just cannot singly by myself just declare myself that all by myself I am the church. So in order to be the church, I must be in collective and uh, collaboration and in community with other believers and, and connect myself one with another. And that's how we have the expression of church. And that's how the legislature of the body of Christ occurs in the realm of the spirit. I can't stay there, but this is the place that we must come to it becomes more than our meetings but what we accomplish in our meetings what happens in the realm of the spirit when we say the benediction what happens in the realm of the spirit when we gather for prayer meeting you see that determines the power of our legislature is what happens in the spirit when we get done But you see, we've gotten used to the church, and the church is good. Don't, don't, I don't want anybody, I love church. I was, I've been raised in church. I, I mean, I, I, all I can ever remember is church. I, I believe, you know, I mean, I, I, if I didn't know any better, I would think my mother birthed me in church. <laughs> But, but so I love the church. So I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm saying. But we've gotten so adapted to church mentality that we have not been able to embrace kingdom. And even though we're espousing kingdom now in this hour, we're trying to make our kingdom exposition from a church mentality so we're making kingdom just as external as church is. In Romans chapter 14, verses 17 through 18, jot it down, I'll tell you what it says. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. You see, in this, the, the, the context of, of this particular passage, there was a lot of debate about the types of things that could be eaten or was not going to be eaten. And, 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 and the apostle had to bring order to that fact and say, well, 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 let me let you understand something, that the kingdom of God is not anything external. It is righteousness, it is peace, and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. These are all internal enterprises. These are all internal things that we must adapt to. And if we can get beyond the external, oh, I, I, I see I'm preaching already. If we can get beyond the external, it's in that place, the Bible says, that if you serve Christ in these things, You will be acceptable to God and approved by men with internal qualities. You see, we consistently want to focus on the external. You see, each time that we want to focus on the external in the church, God says, I want you to go to the kingdom. Every time we look at the outer God says inner uh, somebody needs to start praying with me I'm getting ready to say some things uh, we want to look at the clothes that someone is wearing but God says kingdom are, are you listening to me you see we in the church want to see the young lady who got pregnant out of wedlock and we want to dog her out but God says I want you to go to the kingdom are you praying with me in here today 
You see, we want to cast expersion against the drug addict and the gangbanger and, 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 and rather than finding a, a, a type of theology that will reach them, we're more concerned about where their pants are and how low their, uh, 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 their, their, their braids are, but, but, but God is saying, I need you to get to kingdom. Oh yeah, we're ready to vote about the homosexual. Y'all not gonna like me in here today. We're ready to vote about the homosexual and, and, and to vilify and malign them, but God said, I want you to go to kingdom. <laughs> you see, the reason people are not getting delivered and set free in the church is because we're not kingdom. I know y'all won't pray with me today, but that's all right. The reason we see people come to the church bound and leave bound is because we have not embraced kingdom. We have created such an atmosphere in the church where it's more comfortable for people to live a lie. It's more comfortable for them to live a lie than to be able to be open and honest before God that puts them in a place where they can be delivered and set free. You see, we've got our nice little lies all fixed up. They're, 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 they're adorable, aren't they? They're, they're, we, we fix them up and we dress them up and we make them look real good. We've, 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 we've convinced ourselves that our outward expression of who we are is really who we are. Uh, uh, we have been telling the lie for so long, we have started believing it. You know, this was something, this was something we used to say back when I was a teenager. We used to say, you, you know, we have faked the funk for so long. Anybody remember that one? I know I'm dating myself now, but that's all right. We have faked the funk for so long that now we have, we have a, a dressed up religiosity that we have called holiness that has become a stench in the nostrils of God because really what we are telling people is I'd rather that you lie to me so I can like what I see. <laughs> Please, I, 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 I really, I, I'm coming out of a sincere heart. I really just want to see God's people free. I really, I really, I really just want to see God's people free. And, and we have created an environment that has made bondage acceptable. And I'm not talking about any one church. I'm talking about the body of Christ at large. We have made bondage acceptable. And until we get to the place where we can take people where they're able to go within people will continually be bound because there are some things that are happening to us on the inside for the good and for the bad that must be addressed and if it's not addressed appropriately we will continue to remain in bondage now I know, I, I, I'm just going to say this, this, this right here, let me go ahead and put this out. This is just Markology, okay? This, you know, there were times in the Bible when, when, uh, uh, when Paul would say, and I, Paul, say. He would let you know that that wasn't the spirit. This, 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 this is Markology here. I know the church right now wants to be mad at Oprah. See, it got real quiet in the room. 
See, I know right now everybody wants to be mad at Oprah and they're talking about how she's creating her own religion and all of that sort of thing. And don't get me wrong, I, I don't agree with much of what she is proposing, but she's taking people inward. She's doing what the church was designed to do. We're the ones with the keys to the kingdom. You see, the word of God says that if we wouldn't speak his word, he would cause the rocks to cry out. Now, I know we're mad because Oprah and her rock is crying out. But if the church would get to the place where it was designed to be and bring people to a place of true deliverance, then we wouldn't have time to worry about what Oprah doing. You see, as the church, we've been serving each other external stimuli rather than taking the journey within. And as a consequence, people have been getting comfortable living a comfortable life. Anytime. And I'm not here to badmouth anybody. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But you see, we've created such an environment that we can stand up before people and preach one thing, knowing all the time that we're living something else. And, and again, please don't, un don't misunderstand what I'm saying because I'm not casting expersion against the fact that you're living something else I'm casting expersion upon the fact that you haven't been open enough to let somebody know that you know what I'm struggling with this too let's get on the altar and pray together that's why we are all struggling with something if I were to stand here right now and tell you some of the stuff I've struggled with, the deacons would grab me by each arm and tote me up out of here. You see, when it's, when it's better for us to be able to stand up and and, and, and give nice, well platitudes, you know. Well, praise the Lord. When the Bible says to come and confess your faults one to another. But you try that in church today. You'll be on the gossip line before you know it. Am I talking good in here? This is the place that the church must arrive to. You know, we've got, gotten to the place, you know. You, you, you go and you speak to somebody and you ask them how you're doing. Oh, well, I'm blessed of the Lord. And I've wanted so many times, forgive me, I've wanted so many times to say, look, I know you're blessed of the Lord, I am too. I asked you how you're doing. saying or nor am I advocating that we should get to the point to where we're scared to see each other because we're going to walk up with a list of all our woes and troubles. But what I am saying is that when I'm really dealing with something, I ought to be able to come to my brother or my sister and tell them, you know what, I'm struggling with this thing. I need you to pray me through this thing. I need you to cry with me and travail with me and go through with me. I need you to have my back with this thing. Thank you. I got a witness over here. 
and don't have to put your business out in the street. And let me just go ahead and say this. I I'll talk to myself and I'll let you listen. What I look like talking about you when I know what I'm doing. Jesus told them, he who is without sin. <laughs> Come on, I dare you. Throw the first one. I dare you. <laughs> you see, this is something, this was a place where I got to. Hear me in the spirit. I want you to hear me in the spirit here. When I finally, personally, got delivered from caring what people think. Okay. Amen. I got Say delivered. It. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Stuff that I had struggled with before trying to hide it. Woo! Come on now. You see, my church folk can tell you, I would stand up and tell you in a New York minute Come on now. when I was struggling with something. Now, I didn't keep very, member, very many members that way. Come on now. But you know what? Ask me what? <laughs> Ask me what? me good I needed to be delivered if you need to go somewhere else I love you and that's not a person that left my ministry that can ever say that they were dogged out as a result of it because I wanted to create an environment where people can come to be delivered if that's not for you then that's just not for you Here we are at our text. Let me, let me quit meddling. Because y'all going to tell Pastor Jones on me. <laughs> let, let, let me get to my text. He said, behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. This particular prayer was a prayer prayed by David. After his sin had been brought to him and reminded to him by the prophet. I don't have time to go through the whole story. You, 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 you read, read the story about David and Bathsheba and how the prophet came to him. And, 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 and told him about his sin. This was uh, uh, David, the repentant man of God, praying before his God and repenting. And as he repented about his sins and as he asked God to purge his heart and as he asked God to clean his heart and as he asked uh, uh, God to remake him and, and he recognized that he was uh, 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 shapen in iniquity and in sin did his mother conceive him and, 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 and he poured his soul out before God. In the midst of that prayer, he came to a place of recognition. And he said, God, I realize that really what you're looking for is for me to be honest in the inward part. This has nothing to do with what Deacon Spaghetti, a missionary mashed potato, has to say about my situation. He wants me to keep it real, thank you, in the inward parts. He wants me to be honest with myself because if I can be honest with myself, and I live in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost in the inward part the Bible says that I would be acceptable to God and approved by men well. 
Behold, you desire truth in the inward part. That's my job. Here's God's part. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. One of the reasons why we're not getting delivered and set free is because we're not honest with ourselves. And we have created such an environment where people are so comfortable with lying to themselves that they started believing that. And so we create an environment where the people are not capable of being delivered. Thank you. Yes, she's right. That is not okay. So when I am honest, when I bring truth in the inward part, God gives me a wisdom about the hidden part. Did you hear that? If I provide him honesty in the inward part, he'll give me a wisdom in the hidden part. So once I'm honest with him, he'll give me a wisdom about how to manage that thing that I'm struggling with. But so long as I'm hiding from you and hiding from her and hiding from them, I don't have a wisdom that gets me delivered. My, 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 the people from Berean, uh, uh, when, when the church was still established, I can tell you that... Uh, <laughs> I made a declaration, and, and it wasn't so much about the declaration as it was what was behind the declaration, because it was real. I'm telling you, it was real. When I made the determination and decided, I liberate you, I give you the freedom to think about me whatever you want to. Whatever you decide, whatever you feel, whatever your decision is, I liberate you because I cannot be bound worrying about what you think about me. Because if I'm really going to be set free, then I cannot spend my time worried about what you think about me. I got delivered. Hear me. I'm talking about some real things that I was struggling with. Yes, pastor. Yes, bishop. Yes, I was struggling with some things and I got delivered. And when I figured that thing out, I said, hey, wait a minute. I got to let somebody else know about this thing. You see, we've been playing church for so long that now that I done fooled around and found the real deal here, I got to let somebody know what this kingdom thing is really all about. The kingdom of God, when we go inward, the kingdom of God gives us the power to live a truly authentic life. An authentic life. Where if I mess up and guess what? I will. I can still be authentic. Come on now. Come on now. Deal with my mess up. Come on. And keep right on stomping for Jesus. See, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I don't know if Pastor Jones is going to be listening to this tape or not. I'll go ahead and give my apologies now to Pastor Jones. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm going to say something, if I'm going to say something against any policy of Mount Zion. And, I'm, and I mean that seriously. I'm just telling you where I am. Just telling you where I am. 
we got at Berean where we finally decided, you know what, where did we get in the church? I couldn't find anywhere in the word to substantiate where we get in the word that when somebody messes up, we got to sit them down. Ha ha. It ain't in there. Ha ha. Say it. Now, if you know, let me know because I really want to follow the word. Come on, where that is? Come on, ask your neighbor where that is. You know, somebody mess up and we sit them down from singing in the choir when the Bible says, let everything that hath breath. What is that? The preacher mess up and we feel like he ought to be sat down. Shut up. Oh. Mercy, mercy. When David took another man's wife, had his husband killed, and God never set him down from being king. And we're training people to live inauthentic lives because they're hiding from things that the word of God never gave us credentials to impose. Amen. <laughs> St. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33. I'm just about done now. We're about to wind this thing on down. St. Matthew chapter 6. No, you don't want to tell me that. Tell, you can ask my people. You don't want to tell me that. St. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33 says, But seek first mm, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, here's just a question I just want to toss out. This is just, 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 just a question. Just, get, 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 get a some thinking going on here. You know, you know, God likes a thinking people. You know what I mean? You know, uh, 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 if the kingdom of God is within, to seek first the kingdom, where must I go? If I call mama first, I would not have sought first the kingdom. Hey, let me throw another one at you. If I call pastor first. You don't get a second opportunity to do something first. Whoever was the first person to get here to church today was the first. Can nobody else be the first today? You missed it this time. So if you go anywhere else first, you cannot expect to have these things added to you because you didn't seek first. And if I'm seeking the kingdom within, if I go anywhere outside of where God reigns in me, a kingdom is the king's domain. This is the king's domain. <laughs> is anybody hearing me today? Come on, everybody, everybody stand up for a second. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up for a second. Just for a quick second, just quick second, quick second here. I'm gonna get out your way in a minute, I really am. Do your hands like this and just say, this is the king's domain. That's where he reigns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where he reigns. When he reigns in me, he's reigning. Come on, you can have your seats. See, we must learn to find the journey within until we get away from being bound by what everybody thinks and being captured by 
what, what, what somebody might say and, 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 and in turmoil over what might be said about me. Until we get delivered from that, we are not going to be delivered. I want to give you an invitation today to the journey within. I want you to go on the inside of you. Find out what's really in there. Mm -hmm. You know, really what's in that, you know, I know we stand up in front of the church and we say how we love everybody. But you see, what's really in there is that response that catches me off guard. When you know, when sister so-and-so done got up in my face and before you know it, my neck is rolling and before you know it, my blood pressure is going to see that's what's really in there. Go ahead and be honest enough with yourself to find out what's really in there. If you already know that you struggle with the fact that the freak comes out of you at night, be honest with yourself enough to say that it's in there. Go ahead. Let's figure out. Let's go on the journey within and deal with the stuff that's on the inside and recognize that I'm struggling with this thing, that I'm going through with this thing. Glory to God. Somebody help me get out this. Glory to God. Because until we are honest with ourselves, until we make a true honest admission that I'm struggling with some things, we're going to keep right on struggling and we're going to keep right on hiding and we're going to keep right on pretending and we're going to keep right on leading other people astray because you want to know how the kingdom of God advances the kingdom of God advances when what is within me affects what is in you that's kingdom advancement not building new churches it's when what's on the inside of you changes the inside of her come on in the house today And here, as I close, I'm going to go on and chill out now because see my sugar dropping. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't get my hoop on because my sugar dropping. We'll have to work on that another time. <laughs> you give me some of that. So, So you see, I want to deal with, Ooh, that's good, Lord God, that's plenty, that's plenty. I want to deal quickly with the struggles and the things that we've been going through that we have not been able to identify why we're going through them. The Bible says in Acts chapter 14 and verse number 22 that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So, if you are dealing with turmoil inside you, an entranceway is being prepared for you. Hear me. If you are dealing with tribulation in your experience and in your life, stop trying to get out of it. That is your doorway into the kingdom. That is a ministry of entrance. You see, if I wanted to get in this sanctuary, I had to come through one of these doors. I couldn't go through a door that leads out there trying to get in here. If you're trying to find the kingdom, God already said that the doorway is through much tribulation. And see, I know for years we have taught people that if they're going through, there must be sin in their life. Hogwash. Hogwash. 
go ahead and stand the test of time plant your feet firm and deal with what you have to deal with and go through successfully here's a line for you suffer well into the kingdom you see I made a decision that I'm not going to be punked out by my situation nobody I'm not getting ready to let situations and circumstances keep me from getting into my kingdom place so go ahead and deal with what you have to deal with. Thank you, God. When you seek first the kingdom, and when you go within, it's there. It's in that place where you find your destiny and your purpose. God ministers your purpose within you. I may be able to confirm your calling, but only you can know your calling. And that doesn't happen until I go within. Is there anybody listening to me today? Is there anybody listening to me today? I want to pray for you just just for a few minutes I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make the time too long I just want to pray with you for just a few minutes and I want to pray with you to be delivered from the people I want to pray that you get delivered from that comfortable lie that you have allowed yourself to believe all this time and you see, the Bible says there has no, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. So when you start figuring out what's in there, that's not the time to condemn yourself and to start feeling bad about what's in there. Recognize that you are, that you are finite and that the grace of God is there to cover you, but that the power of God is there to deliver you. Is there anybody listening to me? I want to pray with you to be delivered in your mind so that you can come to a place of being delivered in your life. And if you want to be prayed for in that fashion, I want to invite you right down here to this altar. Glory to God. I just want to pray with you. I just want to pray with you. I want, you. I want your mind to be free. Hallelujah. Man, oh man, I can't tell you how, how, how liberated I was when I finally allowed myself to be freed from that place. Here, let me, let me be transparent for you for a minute. Can, can, I, be, can I be transparent? Will, will that be all right with you? If, if I could just share with you the struggle that preachers, hear me, that preachers go through trying to keep folk from figuring out what they're struggling with. And I went through years of playing the role, faking the funk, putting on the performance. Man, I could outact Denzel Washington any day. I'd put him to shame. They owe me some Oscars and some awards. But when I finally figured out that wasn't getting me nowhere, nowhere I kept right on struggling and I'm not talking about stuff that I was pretending I'm talking about really struggling I'm talking about praying through some stuff and it still be right there when I get up off my knees when I'd be in the middle of my prayer thinking about it is there anybody in the room that know what I'm talking about 
when I'd be in the middle of my Bible study and seeking a word from the Lord and images and things come up in my head. And then come up and preach a message of deliverance when I'm bound. But man, oh man, when that thing, when I finally got to the point that I was able to be honest with myself and honest with anybody who encountered me and not care what they thought about me, when I could really honestly say, like my mama used to say, I ain't stutting you. Can anybody, how do you stut somebody? I, I haven't figured that out yet. But. When I could finally honestly make that declaration, that was when those things that I struggled with, they just seemed to, they, they just weren't important anymore. They just seemed to begin to lift. They begin to vanquish. And they begin to, I didn't have to put as much effort into it. They just begin to go because now I had dealt with my mind. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. That God wants from us is whole ness you will not get to holiness until you come to wholeness when the bible says be ye perfect even as i the lord thy god am perfect when you look at that original word the word in its original greek rendering that word means to be whole so really what he's saying is be ye whole as I, the Lord, your God, am whole. And we have fashioned, fragmented lives, living comfortable lives. There's such freedom in honesty. There's freedom, there's deliverance in honesty. You know, they, 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 they tell alcoholics at the Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, it's not until you admit you're an alcoholic that you can be freed from it. They tell drug addicts, it's not until you admit you're an addict that you're able to be set free. Well, the same thing holds true for all the other struggles that we deal with. When we're honest with what we're dealing with, God can deliver us and set us free. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I lift my hands over these people in a symbolic way of declaring the way you are lifted up above them and the way your hand is over them and touching them and setting free so right now father in the name of the lord jesus i want to pray for these people first of all i want to commend them for their honesty thank you jesus for their honesty hallelujah thank you jesus for their honesty to be able to say you know what i'm struggling with some stuff on the inside i've got some things i'm dealing with on the inside i've played this role far too long and i cannot deal with it any longer in the name of the lord jesus now father i just pray right now that you give that you provide an anointing for the people of God to recognize what's in them. What things do they really struggle with? What things are they lying about? What things have they, have they uh, 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 allowed themselves to believe about themselves that are not true? God, expose it now. But not for the purpose of condemnation. But for the purpose of being set free. For the purpose of being delivered. Oh! but God when they go in there they're not just going to find out the things they struggle with they're not just going to find the things they've been lying about they're going to find out there's a prophet in there <laughs> they're going to find out there's a pastor in there they're going to find out there's an apostle in there there's a business owner in there there's an entrepreneur in there they're going to find out there's an executive in there there's a politician in there there may even be a president in there oh but let them go in and find it God bring it to the surface God let them deal with what's on the inside that the kingdom expression of what's on the inside 
can build to a true church expression on the outside. Glory to God. I pray for wholeness. Wholeness. No more fragmentation. Wholeness. Oh my God. Wholeness. Honesty. Deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, set your people free. Oh God, set your people free. Oh, how can we set a world free and we're bound? How can we bring a world to honesty and we're lying? Oh, set your people free. Deliver us, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God, I speak right now to the mind, to the consciousness. Shebusa. In the name of Jesus. Down to the heart of where we live. And I pray that we would bring up those things that need to be dealt with. Glory to God. Not so that we can relive hurts. The devil is a liar. Not so that we can relive pains. The devil is a liar. But so that we can honestly deal with the things that are in us. That are keeping us bound. That are keeping us from moving to the life on the next level. Hallelujah. Oh God bring deliverance. Bring deliverance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Set your people free. Hallelujah. Now I want you to make a declaration here. And hear me. This declaration. This declaration must be from your heart. From your inward part. Make this declaration. I'm not lying anymore. I'm not lying anymore. Glory to God. Now I want you to go ahead right now and with that declaration, with that declaration, with that in mind, I want you to give God some praise for your new freedom. I mean, for real. Give God praise for your new freedom. For your new freedom. For your brand new freedom. For your new freedom. I'm not going to be bound up anymore. I'm not going to let nobody else bind me up anymore. My new freedom. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I just want you to share your freedom with people around you and just embrace one another. Just embrace one another and share your new freedom. Just embrace one another. Just embrace, embrace, embrace one another and share your freedom. Share that new freedom. Share it, share it, share that new freedom. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 